everyone, welcome back to our video on integrating rational expressions with polynomials using long or synthetic division. Uh, the rule for this, when we're integrating these, we need them to be improper. In other words, we need the degree of the numerator to be at least as much as the degree of the denominator. And if you recall, degree simply means the highest power of x if you look in your polynomial. So we're going to do these three examples in this video. You can see them right here. Um, this one we have degree 1 on top, we have degree 1 on bottom because the highest power of uh, our variable is just simply the x term. Here we have a square term as our highest power, so that's degree 2, this is degree 1. So again, the top has at least as much degree as what's on bottom. Here in our next one, we have degree 3 on top, we have degree 2 on bottom. So numerator has at least the degree of the denominator. If we look in our non-examples here, we have degree 1 on top over degree 2. Uh, that would be a proper fraction when you have more degree on the bottom, so we would not use this method for this one. And this is degree 2 on top, degree 3 on bottom, so again we don't have at least as much degree in the top as we do on the bottom. Let's go ahead and work through these three examples for you so you can see how this might work. Okay, our first one, integral 6x minus 5 over 2x plus 3. Uh, so the way we'll do this, we'll just do this one using long division, and you'll take whatever is on the top and put it inside and people do this different directions depending on where you've seen long division the first time when you were growing up maybe uh, and we'll put our 2x plus 3 out to the left and so the way we do this remember is we say uh, the lead term times what will give us the lead term inside so 2x times 3 gives us the 6x we distribute the 3 outside and write it down below so 3 times 2x gives us 6x and 3 times the plus 3 gives us 9 and remember we then subtract when we're doing long division so we go ahead and change the signs there the 6x term goes away we get negative 14 um, if you remember at this step you would then look at 2x going into what's down below um, but what we have is not large enough so we go ahead and say minus 14 over 2x plus 3. In other words, uh, negative 14 was our remainder for this problem. So the way that we will rewrite this integral is that we will be integrating 3 minus 14 over 2x plus 3. And the reason that's nice is because these are going to end up being power rules, or you might have an ln rule, sometimes you get an inverse tangent rule. Uh, so integral of 3 dx is just 3x. And then if you do a u substitution here, I'm not going to do too much detail, but u is the bottom. Uh, the derivative of that would be 2, so then the top there is just going to be 7 times du. Okay, so we would have minus... 7 integral of du over u. And then if we go ahead and use our log rule for integration here, that would be 3x minus 7 ln absolute value of 2x plus 3 plus c for our answer on this one. For our next one here, integral x squared minus 3x plus 5 all over x minus 2. Uh, because we have a lead coefficient of 1 in the bottom here, I'm going to actually set up synthetic division. So if you remember how to do synthetic division, I just set up the coefficients. Uh, there are a couple variations to this. Um, so I always bring the first number down if I have a lead coefficient of 1. Uh, usually people will put the opposite sign of what's there, so I'm using 2 instead of negative 2, so 1 times 2 is 2. We add, we get negative 1. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. We add, we get 3. And so this is really representing x minus 1 plus remainder of 3 over what we were dividing by. So we'll go ahead and turn our integral then into the integral of x minus 1 plus 3 over x minus 2 dx. And then everything is simply a power rule except for the last one, which is a log rule. So here we'll get uh, 1 half x squared for the first term. Integral of negative 1 dx would be negative x. And then here we'll get simply plus 3 ln of x minus 2, and if you're not sure on that, you can work out just setting uh, x minus 2 equals u 
and you'll get du exactly on the top. Okay, so that's our answer for that one. So the last one we did uh, long division, this one we did synthetic division. Um, you can kind of decide when you have a linear factor, remember you can use synthetic division. Um, if you have something like our last one here, which uh, has a quadratic on the bottom, then synthetic division is not really an option here in the general sense. Uh, so we have 3x cubed minus 7x plus 1 over x squared plus 1. So if I set up what I'm going to divide, um, one thing if you're missing a term, remember it might be nice to represent that term uh, with 0 times that power. So we'll set up 3x cubed plus 0x squared minus 7x plus 1. And then on the outside, we're dividing by x squared plus 1. Uh, so we say what times x squared gives us 3x cubed, 3x. Distribute, you'll get 3x cubed. 3x times 1 is 3x. That's an x term. It should go in the x column. Uh, you'll notice because our terms are spaced apart, there's no x term between them. When we distribute and write down below, we're getting um, terms written in columns that are apart from each other. So here we'll have subtract changing the signs. Uh, we don't have anything really to bring down here, so I'm not going to bring down the 0x squared. We would get negative 10x plus 1 once we bring this down. Um, trying to take this into this, we have too many x's here to fit into the x term. So this is our remainder here. Uh, so we would go ahead and say uh, plus negative 10x plus 1 over x squared plus 1. So we're going to go ahead and change this then to integral of 3x. Uh, I'm going to write it this way and then I'm going to split each piece. So I'm going to say negative 10x over x squared plus 1 and then I'm going to put the plus 1 separate over the x squared plus 1, and we'll go ahead and do our integral there. Okay, moving down, uh, the antiderivative of 3x will get power rule, give us power goes up by 1, divide by the new power, so 3 halves x squared. Um, if we do this one, we would say u equal to x squared plus 1, and du would be 2x dx. Um, and this is 5 times as much as 2x dx, so we would say minus 5 integral of du over u. And for this one, this is exactly actually an inverse tangent rule. So this would be inverse tangent of x here. And then we just need to complete our log rule, so we'll go ahead and complete that u substitution part there. So we'll get minus 5 ln of its really absolute value or that one there of u. Don't forget our plus c. And then really I think what most people will want you to do is notice that x squared plus 1 is not anything that could be negative. So really they're going to want you to rewrite that showing that you know that x squared plus 1 doesn't really need the absolute value because it's a quantity that will never be negative anyway in terms of real numbers. And so this would be our answer with the x squared plus 1 just in parentheses there. Okay, hopefully this gives you an idea of how to do long or synthetic division with polynomials when they are in fraction form uh, to do some integration. We'll see you in the next one.